Let us look at the next section, students. This section contains two paragraphs. Each paragraph has two questions each. Each question has four options, out of which only one single option is correct. Let us look at the comprehension given for question number 33 and 34, students. So, according to Graham's law, the ratio of rates of diffusion or effusion of two gases, A and B, under identical conditions of temperature and pressure is given by Ra by Rb equal to under root of Mb by Ma. However, if they have the same temperature but different pressure, then the following relation is used. So, Ra by Rb is equal to Pa by Pb into under root of Mb by Ma. So, question number 33, it says, the time taken for a certain volume of gas X to diffuse through a small hole is 4 minutes. It takes 5.65 minutes for the same volume of oxygen to diffuse under identical conditions. What is the molecular weight of X? So, students, if we talk about the rate now, so we have R of X by R of O2. So now students, we can write delta N for X by delta T. This is the rate for X. And if you talk about the rate for the oxygen, so we have delta N of O2 into delta T. Okay. So now if we talk about the delta NX and the delta NO2 students, from the question, it appears that both of them are the same. Okay. So delta T for X and delta T for O2 are going to appear in the rate expression okay so if we talk about the rx by ro2 we have the ratio of rate of x to ro2 as delta t for o2 and delta t for x okay so if we talk about delta t for o2 it is 5.65 and if we talk about the time taken for x it is given us as 4 minutes so if we simplify this value students it comes out to be equal to 1.41 which is approximately root 2 okay so, we can now use this molar mass expression, students. So, we have Rx by RO2 equal to under root of MO2 by MX equal to root 2. Okay. So, this must mean that MO2 is 2 times the value of MX. So, this means that the molar mass of X is equal to 32 by 2, which is equal to 16. Okay. So, students, for this question, we have to mark the correct answer as option A. Let us look at the next question now. Question number 34. It says, 1 gram of O2 diffuses from a container in 30 seconds. What mass of hydrogen will diffuse through the same container in 60 seconds under identical conditions? Okay. So, students, this time the term or the expression of PA by PB is again same. But now in terms of rate, the examiner seems to be dealing in terms of both the time as well as the mass or the moles. So, students, we can have R of O2 by R of H2 as delta N of O2 in time for O2 into delta N for H2 in the time for H2. Okay. So, if you talk about the delta N of O2 students, now we have 1 gram of O2. So, we can have 1 by 32 into the time given to us is 30. Okay, but for H2, if we talk about the time given to us is 60 and the weight is unknown, but the molar mass shall be equal to 2. So, if we simplify this, we have a value of 1 by 8W. Now, students, this rate shall be equal to molar mass of H2, which is equal to 2 upon molar mass of O2, which is equal to 32. Okay, so on simplification, this term, which is under the root, shall come out to be equal to 1 by 4. So, students, we have 1 by 8W is equal to 1 by 4. So, it must mean that the value of W is equal to 0 0.5 grams. So, students, if we talk about question number 34, we have to mark the correct answer as option B. Let us look at the next paragraph, students. Let us look at the paragraph given for question number 35 and 36. A covalent bond formed between two identical atoms is non-polar, like H2, O2 or N2. But it is polar when it is formed between two different atoms like HCl, CO or NO and it has a permanent dipole moment. So, dipole moment is a vector quantity. Its magnitude is given by the product of magnitude of either charge Q and the dipole length X. So, the dipole moment is given by mod of Q into X. The dipole moment of a polyatomic molecule depends upon its shape and is calculated by vector addition of bond dipole moments. Okay. So, question number 35, it says, which of the following orders of dipole moments is correct? 
So we've been given three different species. We have H2O, NH3 and NF3 students. So in H2O, we have two lone pairs. In NH3, we have one lone pair. And in NF3, we have again one lone pair. So students, we know that the dipole moment of NH3 is more than NF3 because of the lone pair dipole. So the NH dipoles and the lone pair dipoles act along the same direction, whereas in NF3 it is the opposite. So in NF3, the NF bond dipoles and the lone pair dipole, they act in opposite directions. So the dipole moment of ammonia is more than NF3. Now, if we talk about H2O and ammonia students in H2O, since there are two lone pairs, so these OH dipole and the lone pair dipoles, they'll all act in the similar direction. And as a result, the dipole moment of H2O is going to be greater. So students, for this question, we have to mark the correct answer as option A, which says that the dipole moment of water is more than ammonia is more than NF3. Okay. Let us look at the next question now. Question number 36. Compare the dipole moments of the following compounds and identify the compounds having non-zero dipole moments. So students, we have to identify those compounds which do not have a permanent dipole. Okay. So if we talk about the first structure students, we have OH groups attached at the 1-4 position. So students, this might appear to be non-polar, but if we try and figure out the geometry around oxygen, we're going to have two lone pairs on oxygen. So because of the presence of these two lone pairs over oxygen students, this compound will not be symmetrical all the time. And as a result, the dipole moment will not be cancelled. So this does not have a mu equal to zero. Let's talk about the second compound now. In the second compound also students, there is a lone pair of electrons present on nitrogen. And as a result, it is not perfectly symmetric. So due to this asymmetry, the mu or the dipole moment also will not be equal to zero. There will be a permanent dipole moment for this compound as well. If you talk about the third compound now, in the third compound, both the CLs have three lone pairs each. Okay. And as a result, they will be symmetrical. And for this structure, the mu shall be equal to zero. If you talk about the last structure now, we have two methyl groups. So it is one, four dimethyl benzene. So in this case as well, this is a symmetrical molecule. So mu shall be zero in this case as well. Okay. So students in the first and the second compound, the mu was not equal to zero because of asymmetry. So there were two NH bonds and one lone pair in this case, and there were two lone pairs and one OH bond in this case, which was causing the asymmetry in the molecule. So students, compound one and compound two have a non-zero dipole moment. And for this question, we have to mark the correct answer as option C. So this is it for today, guys. I hope the solutions were clear to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.